Hey, do you sleep last night? Uh, uh, no. No? No. Why not? Uh, because, because you're up all night thinking about how you could get 20% off and free shipping if the, with the promo code dangle at manscaped.com, wasn't it? Yes. Let's start the show. Why are you tired? <laughs> what happened? Who, me? Yeah, you're out of breath. What do you mean I'm tired? <laughs> okay. well, what are you talking about? I'm out of breath. For shirt. <laughs> the Steve Dangle Podcast. Powered by Sports Interaction. Canada's Sportsbook. D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. I'm out of breath because I ran upstairs to put on my Lando Norris shirt. Oh. Because Jesse... I came in with his Lewis Hamilton slash George Russell look. Mercedes shirt. Mercedes shirt. Yes. So anyway. For anybody listening, yeah, we are wearing competing F1 shirts. You know, and despite all the porpoising that's happening with the Mercedes car, you know, we're we're beating you in the constructor. You are. And, and I'm, I'm upset because uh, McLaren actually uses a Mercedes engine. Uh-huh. And so it's a little bit frustrating because all the McLaren cars, or sorry, all the Mercedes cars have sucked this year. What happened to your golden boy? I, Daniel Lando? Ricardo. Well, no, Lando's my boy. Oh, Lando's you, my boy. Everybody okay. loves Daniel. I, Lando's always, like, I was a Verstappen guy. Uh-huh. And, and then it becomes easy to cheer for that guy because he's winning everything. So, well, so I'm like, so then I'm like, yeah. my team, after watching last year, like, watching McLaren come out of nowhere and be like the know. fourth, the third best team most of the season, Only they're still fourth. Three. Yeah. They're still fourth. Yeah. Top five. What you saying? <laughs> is this is, she, is this the focus of this show? Is this where we want to go? I I, Why, I think we should move on because Steve is already sick of it. Okay. Now, Jesse, I have a question for you. I was, I was can playing you, along. Jesse, <laughs> can you have a look at your text messages? Uh, I have how sent are you, you guys something. Making fun of me today. I have sent you something. Yeah. And I would just like to show off because we can run this because it was on Instagram. So this is public. <laughs> okay. I'm just before anybody thinks that we're going to get in trouble, we can do this. We're taking this directly. From Sportsnet's okay. Instagram feed, okay. which means it's public domain, which means Sportsnet, no. I, Stop it. I don't know if that's how it works. That is how it works. Don't Once it's on there, me. it's public domain, and I'm promoting Sportsnet. I I'm promoting know. Watch a Game with Steve Dangle. I, I know, know, I know. Steve, don't worry. I'm good at this. I don't, I don't, I don't right. Know. I just want you to <laughs> hear. I want you to hear, because what oh, you're you about to hear, hear in all oh, these God. clips. I'm not good at this anymore. What you're going to hear in these clips. What's happening right now? Is just, just <laughs> listen. There's a thing. I'm terrified. Don't be. You don't have to talk as much because you did all the talking in these clips. Get ready. I had so many Jesse, there's like eight clips here. Oh, and all I need you to do yeah. is quickly go through them because you're going to hear least fans at the beginning of the game, least fans in the middle of the game, and least fans at the end of the game. You had least fans at the beginning of the game. Oh my God, there's no hope. Least fans in the middle of the game. Okay, maybe, maybe there's hope, but please don't break my heart. And least fans at the end of the game freaking the F out. And it's all channeled through one Steve Dangle. Go ahead. Come on, play. boys. Which no player has ever said before. Oh boy, Jack. I mean, it's a good shot. That's the Stamkos goal. It's a good battle from Kucherov. I didn't see that hit anything. Next one. Next one. Not good enough is an understatement. (laughs) Oh boy! (laughs) Terrible. No, I can't terrible, even terrible, terrible, terrible. It's, it's amazing that you do it. All right, Six next one. Next one. Seconds. So it's 2 nothing tap at this point. Mm-hmm. Or will he? That's cool. Oh, they score. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> William Nylander puts it on net. I think he got a deflection from the captain. And the Toronto Maple Leafs, like that, are within one. Next one. And they're tying it, by the way. I hope you know that. Boom. They put it on. Rebound. It's loose. Ah. Get it! Get it back in oh, uh, how do you still have it, LaBouche? Yeah. <laughs> Come on! None of that goes in, but now you'll know why Steve sounds like this today. The Lightning in survival mode, pure survival mode. The Leafs got to gain the zone. Leafs give up a breakaway. With the dangle. Oh, he's picked off by Vlad. The Lightning go get a breakaway. Here's Nick Wall again. Shoot! Stop! Why? Campbell. Remember nice. that save. Now that was important. Let's keep going to the next one. Riley was open, but Tavares was behind the net. Tavares. Oh, in front of Riley. He scored. He scored. <laughs> this is four on four. First goal. Tavares They're 2-2 two, two now. We like to have fun, don't we? Right? And the Leafs tie it. Next two. one. <laughs> don't forget, the Leafs are about to get 10 seconds of a power play here. And William Nylander with an open shot. Score. <laughs> Score. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? William Nylander. What's the Leafs up? 3-2, less than five minutes into the third period. Police down 2-1 at the 
period's beginning. Now hold the lead. Hold the fate of Well, now what happens? Do they hold the lead? Next, next slide. Pen penalty box. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ryan McDonough ties it with a blast. <laughs> The big line gets hemmed in its own zone. All right. Ryan McDonough. And last line. And here comes the partial two on one. Myers with Matthews. Martin for Zuna. Matthews rebound. Scores. Matthews scores. Change the narrative, baby. Austin Matthews with 6.06 to go in the sixth. Put the Leafs up. Four, three. All right. I think we're good on that. You get the idea. So, Steve, you sound, like, you sound like oh, this God. this morning. Yeah. Your heart rate was at 160 last night. Yeah, I don't believe that. No? No. I don't, I don't know. Isn't that on your watch? Because well, it went from 120 something to like 160, which is insane. I think it might have been me shaking. Oh, maybe. I don't know. I don't. I hope not because I got a tweet from Commander Chris Hadfield yes, this morning. I wanted to bring that up. <laughs> who you might know as an astronaut who went to space. And apparently yeah. his heart rate did not reach 160. While he was being launched into actual space, he said, he said his pulse was two third. Uh, during launch, my pulse was two thirds dangle. That's math. And by the way, the person that asked him about that, I don't believe knows you exist. That's fine. Like Matt Gertie, I don't know if he knows you exist. Matt is a uh, is a journalist. I think that's hilarious. This morning, I barely exist between um, the stream and LFR and allergies. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to pull this out tomorrow. I want to have another one of these tomorrow. So, so, <laughs> holy shit. So, Jesse sends us a text right before the game last night, right before Steve lo logs on to this. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. And, Jesse, what you were on Sports Interaction. Oh, yeah. 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 What did you, what were you, what were you asking Steve about whether you should bet or not? I asked you about Morgan Riley. Will he get any points uh, last night? And was it said, goals? Was it goals or points? No, it was just, will he have any points? I bet the Austin... I was fucking... I was on fire last night. <laughs> five for five. Uh, Actually? Yeah, yeah. Holy shit. Because I, uh, I had Austin Matthew, anytime goal scorer. I had Morgan Riley, which you said when I asked you, hey, will Morgan Riley get a point? Um, you, what did you tell me? I guarantee it. You I, said, I, I, I pulled out my Charles Barkley it. and I said, I guarantee it. <laughs> and then I had uh, under seven and a half goals. I had the Leafs winning twice. Because I took them when they were down. That's my, my favorite least thing oh. to do. It's two and a half goals. When they get down by two goals, you get the two and a half plus Leafs plus two and a half. And uh, that hits like a bunch of times because they love coming back. And they, it, was a, it was a classic Leafs game. It was beautiful. Oh, it was awesome. Now, so good. I yeah. want you to know. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. By the way, <laughs> sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. These, those are bets that you made. Yeah. These are real. Yeah. So, so listen, when we talk about the game as a whole, and specifically about the Leafs, we're talking about a poised, gutsy, well, strong, focused group. After. But <laughs> it didn't start that way. No. So th let's talk about the bad first at the first period here, because I, I got a couple of messages, and clearly from one of the, one of my buddies, Mike, who was like, "I'm in a really dark place. I can't do this again." Oh. And this is in the first intermission. And I have to say, like, I kept it super positive on Twitter last night because I was like, I, Mike, I have to put positivity out there because negativity is not going to help this. But I will not lie to you. It was like I was if, on that right before the game. It felt like, well, you were you were texting everybody. We're going to win. It's going to happen. And then they come out like that. And, and I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship and broken up with somebody and then got back together. And the first fight that you have, it goes to the worst place possible. That's what the least felt like. It just, it just, very specific. It is, but it feels like it just, it takes you back to the worst moments of your life, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, the, and that's how it felt. The first intermission discussion um, with everyone behind the scenes for Watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle presented by Molson Canadian um, was basically like if you're Kyle Dubas, like people were talking about him like being done as Leafs GM. And what I was saying is, I, the, it's people were talking about that's it, man. That's crazy. That's oh, crazy. You know it's going to be a thing if the Leafs lose, right? Yeah. Which they won't, which is cool. So they won't. Mm -hmm. But if they, in a hypothetical world where they were to, people would be talking about his job. And I was like, I wouldn't be rushing to my next one if I were him because I would question uh, how much I actually know about this because uh, the evidence that my eyes and ears in jest is not unfolding in the playoffs. And this year is so much more frustrating than last year, if it were to fail, because last year, what did I say? 
I go, I don't know what I would change about this group. I liked the Felino deal. Dude had a broken back. I liked that they got extra depth. Clearly the best team in the division playing a team they should clearly beat. Hooray. And then they lose. Mm -hmm. And that screwed my brain and screwed a lot of Leaf fans' brains. This year, it's, you know, we were talking about, behind the scenes, we were talking about Kyle Dubas assembling a team that's good on paper. That's, that's not the truth necessarily, though, because they're good on paper and they pass the eye test. Like, gritty wins against Carolina and Pittsburgh and Tampa. Oh, you mean like the old school would be happy with this? And the Panthers, yes. Like, they were visually better mm -hmm. than their opponent. And then you look at the paper and you go, yep, checks out. So for them to get completely outclassed by Tampa, you know, I was just sort of throwing my hands up like, what do you do? Like in the oh, first period. In the first period. Yeah. So like not if, even Sunday. Like no. we're talking about the first period last night. Yeah. Talking about the first period last night. Um, like you're gonna have bad games, mm -hmm. but we're we're talking about it's an accumulation now. And, you know, oh, the Leafs in the off season, like blow it up is is um it's not specific. Like Kyle Dubas can't get on his phone and be like, blow it up. No, you like you have to call teams and make specific moves what specific moves would you make and i'm here looking at this team and going i don't know what the hell i would change because they sh there's no reason for them to be playing this poorly mm -hmm. there's no reason for it first five minutes low event one shot a piece um they have one defensive breakdown and they pay for it with the sam coast goal and it ruined the entire rest of the period save for maybe the final two minutes. And I, you can't play 20 shitty minutes against the Tampa Bay Lightning. You can't even play 15 or 10. It was so, un, it was uncharacteristic. Well, and then you have Mitch Marner uh, with a, sh a chance to stick breaks. And then you oh, have, and I then you have about Mitch one. Marner, who's by the way, been an absolute star. So don't think I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to uh, submarine him on this one, but like he, he also then takes an odd penalty in the first 10 seconds of a penalty that they, they were on the power oh, the play. the McDonough one. And he took a, a penalty. That was the one call the Leafs got I had issue with. Yeah, the, the rest of them, I'm like, yeah, that's a call. Yeah, it was, um, that was a bit I soft. Thought that, I thought that one was a bit soft. And you're just, you're thinking, man, like everything that can go wrong has. Yes, yes. And it really did start to feel like that. And Jack Campbell, you know, you know, maybe he didn't you, square up on, on Stamkos. He's not no, in the, the proper spot in the net. You probably like him to have that one. Killorn completely took his eyes away on the second. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, he held, he held the team in the game. Yes. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And supposedly Jason Spezza, I don't know if he was stoic or tore the paint off the walls, but he was one of several Leafs to speak up at intermission, and they changed it. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you what changed the game. Okay. The Leafs figured out how to utilize John Tavares. Well, so so this is important because John Tavares has taken a ton of criticism. I know the Hockey News had an article right before saying this is the game he needs to show up. This is why they signed him. What changed? So John Tavares, known for his um, speed, yes? No. No, not at all. So here's the problem. And, you know, we ignore the contract for a second. Forget the contract. Salary cap doesn't apply right now. We're in the middle of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I don't want him driving play. And I think Tampa was doing their best to get him to drive play. And he was getting some carries through the neutral zone. And the problem there is they're going to beat him every time. Um, he's strong on the puck, but they're at very least going to gum up the works and make it difficult for the Leafs to get sustained uh, pressure. Mm -hmm. Keith starts the game with McKayev and Kerfoot, two dogged players with a lot of speed. Doesn't really work. Willie plays his best game of the series. And him... After a shitty penalty in the first. After a sh stupid penalty. Dumb. I was so Dumb. mad. And uh, he plays so much better. And then I think they keep Kerfoot with Tavares. And what they allowed him to do by committee um, was they gained the zone and they let him go to work in the corners and behind the net. Which is what he does. Uh, that's what led to the power play goal. Or was it a power play goal? The, the first one, the, the Morgan Riley goal? No, the, 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 the one that was his goal. It was a power play goal. Yes. Matthews yep. was out there. Yeah, so that was a power play goal. So that's a power play goal. It's a little bit different. 
But the Riley goal, four on four. Again, it's four on four. There's more space out there. So it's easier to gain the zone. And who gains the zone? Was it JT? No. No, it was Willie flying in. Willie uh, swooping back behind the net, keeping uh, Hedman and Chernak um, to one side of the net while Riley stands there for five or six seconds completely unguarded. It was hilarious. He literally, he just stands there. And I'm like, okay, Tavares can't pass it through the net. But the second he gets around, it's curtain. It's a goal. Finally does. And he scores. John Tavares was able to be the little thing king because he didn't have to do the big things. Now, we can talk about $11 million and this and that, but should you not utilize your players to the best of their ability? Should you, should you not try to accentuate a player's best skills? And for John Tavares, that's being a net front presence and winning battles behind the net. But isn't that always what he's been? That is always what he's been. Among but, the league's best. Yes, but Nylander has not been at his best. And I mean, it's hard to bounce back from food poisoning in the middle of the playoffs. Yeah. And he yeah. got, he got off to the wrong, uh, you know, started on the wrong foot. He, that was the best his legs have looked in the series by far, bar none. Kerfoot looked good. Um, the Leafs at home were so much better at using their speed in the second period. And they allowed Tavares to go to work, which opened up Matthews. It just opened up everything. Didn't it? Well, I thought so, and, and, and I think, and I wanted to ask you guys about a couple of things. First off, if Austin Matthews is, is on your team, and you expect him to carry most of the offensive load, people were starting to get on him again. You know, he'd scored once, I think, in the previous 10 or 11 games in the playoffs, or twice or something. It wasn't a lot. It wasn't a lot. I think it was twice. In and, and, and so people are starting to get on him, and rightfully so. But when I, he didn't score yet, but when I saw him out there throwing his body around, throwing hits... Uh, fighting back against yeah. Pat Maroon. Maybe fortunate to get away with that one with uh, Sergeyev. Yeah, he left his feet. It was a bad hit. Yeah. But it's one of those where you kind of, when you're, when you're, when you're, your captain, or and he's not the captain yet, but I think he's going to be. Yeah. When your best player is doing that, it's pretty hard not to just want to jump out there and do it the same way. And I, I also want to throw this out there. I, I thought it was hilarious. Like I, I think it's been hilarious. The, the Leaf fans in the building. And I was, we were there in game 82 and it was like this too. Well, Leaf fans get a, a shitty rap because so many of the tickets are premium buy tickets. They're four or 500 bucks a piece on a regular night. And a lot of people in there are corporate, corporate buyers, people who are in suits, people there with clients. Adam Wilde. And they're not cheering. And they're not cheering for the Leafs in the same way that you or I would. Yeah. Screaming, you know, uh, jumping up and down, that sort of thing. But the Leafs fans in this series, there's not a single other fan base that, can ha that has anything to say about these crowds now. Like those crowds were they're, in it. They're loud as hell. And they got a penalty call. Yeah, perhaps too much so. <laughs> did you got a penalty call? Did you see that? No. So you should look this up. <laughs> the uh, uh, remember, not I you should look this up, but you should look. I can't it. hear the game. So there was a point where, and I forget who got called, but it was coming. It was in the Leaf zone. Um, and there was a there was like a hook or something. It and was the, Stamkos tripping uh, Matthews right. behind the net. Yeah. And the and the fan like everybody saw him go down. I jumped up in my living room. Everybody in the in Scotia Bank jumped up, and the ref had paused and wasn't going to put his hand up. But as soon as the crowd reacted, the hand went up, and there was an actual pause. They talked about it on the broadcast. They talked about it in the intermission. The crowd got on, got on him, and got him to react. And so, don't tell me that fans don't play a a, 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 a thing in that as well. Right? So I I sort of people thought I jinxed the game by saying the Leafs were going to win. I did actually jinx the game, just not in the way I thought. Because I retweeted scouting the refs. I think the refs were uh, Hansen and Ebert. Mm -hmm. And uh, scouting the refs, um, they do this amazing thing where they show a team's record when um, a certain ref is officiating their game right. year in, year out. It shows how often the home team wins, how often the home and road team gets the calls. And it also shows our breakdown of penalties called first, second, and third period. And I actually, I reached out to them yesterday and I was like, does this include like ticky tacky end of the game, game management stuff? And, you know, they were talking about ways that they're going to improve it and make it be power plays maybe rather than penalties or, mm. or show both. But one thing the stats showed is both Hanson and a bear called significantly more penalties over their career in the second period. So first period, you're getting a feel for the game. Second period, they lock it down third period they let you most play. refs they let it go no like it was uh there, there were seven calls seven in the first mm -hmm. 
followed by two and two. Yeah, I think, and largely, I think that was because the Leafs stopped committing dumb penalties. Because if, you, I run, yeah, if well. you no, if you run down those penalties, it was it was Brody dumb. He got beat and then yep. hooked. Yes, yep. Nylander dumb. Uh, the hooking. And then who's the third one? The Mitch Marner one. Yeah. On, yeah. Right off the power. There's three right there. So but, for the first period, the narrative for me was the same one that the games they lost. It's the bad penalty. Yeah. But it is worth mentioning, like, Matthews probably should have been called for the Sergeyev hit. Mm-hmm. I think Ross Colton should have been called for knocking down Morgan Riley, which directly led to the third lightning goal, the McDonough goal. I thought it was okay. Uh, there's, <laughs> it's away from the puck, though. And right, right. based on the way they called the first, I think it's a penalty. Mm-hmm. Is it a penalty in general? No, probably not. But fuck, the way they've been calling the series, <laughs> right. I'm I'm looking it's at it. Been that. tight. Like if depending on how you look at it, you could judge that to be the worst officiated game in the series so far because it was the least consistent. Right? The first period was listen, don't breathe on anyone. <laughs> and it just it was anarchy for the rest of the game. Like the, uh we're talking about a penalty to negate a power play after 10 seconds. So there was 10 seconds of power play time in the third period, I think. And then um, in the second period, there were two penalties and one was too many men. So how many actual like infractions leading to power plays did, did they call? One. For the last 40 minutes of the game. Mm. After calling seven. In the, or if you take away the too many calls, six in the first period. It was, it was two different officiating crews. And I, don't, I wouldn't say it benefited the Leafs. Um, at all, they, they were certainly able to skate Tampa into the ground at certain points. Yeah, I think I think it changed once the Leafs were dominating play. I think a lot of the infractions stopped. I think when the yeah, Leafs yeah. were trailing is when uh, they were forced to commit all these infractions. Like we, I didn't even mention the uh, the Geo cross check, a kind of a, just a useless cross check. That's like an yeah. iffy call. But like, I feel like when they're trailing, they're they're trying to catch up more and they're committing more infractions. But it's it's it was a it was kind of a soft call, but it was mm-hmm. consistent with the series. Yeah, and that's the way, not just the way they've been calling penalties, but that's the way they've been calling cross checks mm-hmm. specifically in the series. So for Giordano to be like, oh my god, like <laughs> you shouldn't be shocked. There. It was really that was frustrating to watch. I'm like, holy shit! Like, so you're not even adapting, mm-hmm. like at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but they got, then they did kind of after they come out of the first period. Then they did. So this is the thing. When the Leafs have the puck and the Leafs are skating, it takes away Tampa's ability to draw a penalty. Uh-huh. So like was Brody's penalty on Nick Paul dumb? I would argue it wasn't dumb. I would argue it's Nick Paul just pantsing TJ Brody. That, <laughs> that was a penalty because he got beat. He yeah. got beat. And if he doesn't hook Paul in the hands, it's probably, I think that would have made it three nothing or no. Yeah. That would have made it two nothing, and then it ended up making it two nothing anyway. Right, right. Right. So it really just delayed the inevitable. Um, I, th- I think what it was is the Leafs just stopped playing like shit. I want to say this too: uh, the McDonough goal, and you could hear you could hear it in Steve's montage at the beginning of the episode. The McDonough goal in the past, I feel like this is where the poise and the guts come in. Would have crushed them. Would have would have really been a, a dagger. And um, I, when even when I saw it go in, I just felt like. No, they still could. Yep. They st- it's not guaranteed, but you definitely felt like this team. I, I think that you, once you've seen heartbreak, it's like you become less afraid of heartbreak, right? To me, it means more that the Leafs won that game because of that goal. Because, uh, you know, you always bet on the Leafs comeback, Jesse. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the Leafs are good at scoring goals, mm-hmm. right? It's a whole other ball game when the game's tied, right? It's one thing to ride that momentum. We've seen the Leafs. Get two or three quick ones. We've seen it. Saw it last night, four on four. It's, yeah, it's, and it's it's just not difficult for them. And and you could also go, yeah, it was four on four though. Blah blah blah. No, it's five on five. Tampa ties it, and then in the most important moments of that game, the Leafs beat Tampa, five on five, tied game. That gave me a lot of confidence heading into game oh, yeah. six. And that made me feel real good. For me, I like revisiting some of the narratives we talk about on the show, like going into the series and seeing where they're at. And Adam, one of the questions you asked uh, going into this was like, okay, what happens, what needs to happen for the Leafs to win? I said, uh, the, the stars need to show up. And last night, the reason they won is because the big five were there. Riley had a great game. Willie yep. had a great game. JT finally woke up. Mitch Marner was unbelievable. Probably the best player on the ice, I like to he say. played eight minutes in the first crazy after the first (laughs) Austin Matthews we know what happens with Austin Matthews and like that the last goal the two-on-one that if if you watch the play that leads up to the neutral zone turnover 
That's because Matthews comes up with bunting and Muzzin's there protecting the uh, the other end of the Bash ice. Brothers. The the three of them converge on the puck and they get this turnover at center ice and then Matthews hightails it back the other way. Yeah. It's not it just was, it's not just the uh, uh willingness to work, it's the read. Oh the yeah. lightning quick read. And I showed it in stills in the LFR the amount of time in which it takes Matthews to just leave Nick Paul in his dust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One stride. It was one stride. And he's gone. It was an it's unbelievable play by a centerman to to force that turnover with Bunting, who gets crushed at the end of it, and yeah. then go back the other way where Mitch Marner's on the uh, the other spot on the uh, weak side, and he gets the puck and he feeds it to Matthews. And well, and the neutral zone defense in the final minutes to not allow Tampa to pull Vasilevsky. Oh yeah. Oh man. Yeah, we didn't How talk about cute. that because <laughs> I was thinking with four minutes left, I said I looked over now, I'm like they're gonna they're gonna be pulling the goalie soon. You watch, mm -hmm. and they didn't. And they should have. I, I, I was shocked that Tampa waited with three minutes, three minutes left yeah. that they finally did. I'm like, four minutes left. You go for it. What are you doing? It's it's if they were down two, I bet they do. But it's one and they're playing the percentages. And they're like, we're Tampa. We could probably if we force this play enough, we could probably squeak out a goal. Yeah. And that your dad did a great job ringing around the boards and just missing yeah. the net. I was like, oh, <laughs> but but I had my uh, my seven and a half uh, riding on that. empty <gasps> oh. net. So I, I was sweating for the last minute. And just, you're cheering against the Leafs. I, I wanted them just to hold the lead. That's what I, mean. that's funny. I didn't want to admit that, but that's what I was trying for. And the other thing, when I was just skating around, <laughs> revisiting the narratives, you guys said, I, I said the stars need to show up. And you guys said Jack Campbell needs to show up. And last night, Jack Campbell saved the game like three, three different times. times. Yeah. The Kucherov save with eight minutes to go. Unbelievable. When it was tied, he jumped off his feet. Crazy. Like yep. that's, that's a ridiculous read. Because like Kucherov... Imagine how stupid Jack Campbell would look if uh, Kucherov just goes, oh, and slides it underneath him because he's jumped in the air. And that is potentially what puts the Leafs on the brink of elimination. But it was just. No, he was. He read was it. Soup. I, classic soup. Now, um, uh, obviously, the, the Marner shooting it at Vasilevsky's pads to get it to Matthews. Mm. Great play. I mean, that's a, that, that is quite the play. You have to have pretty special chemistry to be able to pull that off. And it just goes to show, too, that, like, you know, a normal player would have tried to pass it through the defenseman. And that's what makes Mitch Marner special. I think and the Mitch Marner of old would have tried to pass it through the defenseman. You think he's, this is next level Mitch Marner? Oh, yeah. Super Saiyan Mitch Marner? He's learned. He's learned. Well, because his shot is a factor now. It is. It is. I, I wish he'd use it. Like, he didn't use it last night. He did. There was a, well, yeah, but there was a couple of times last night, and you guys all remember this, where, where the Leafs got a little too cute. And, yep. and they were on the power play, especially that first one. Such an ineffectual power play in the first period. And you're like, if Mitch will just start shooting again, these lanes are going to open up for everybody. He got mad because his stick broke. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I don't know. Um, but I, I wanted to mention this. After the game, John Cooper uh, said, and this is, this is something he's done before. He said, we're not really making them earn it. We're kind of giving it to them. Oh, shut up. He said it again? Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the so, narrative coming out of game one. So just is my, say we took too too many men on the ice calls. <laughs> yeah, just say yeah, like you're and and he, he is he not responsible for that? Um, and I I also I just want to say like listen I get it it's gamesmanship and that sort of thing but it loses a like the first time you say it okay fine but two is dumb but but mm -hmm. and it's not like Tampa fans aren't stupid no. Tampa players aren't stupid Tampa management isn't stupid Tampa media isn't stupid and neither are the Leafs fans in all in all categories so. We all know that that's bullshit. I understand trying to be a gamesman, but that actually, to me, worked against because then it, it felt like, I don't want to say nervous. condescending. You looked nervous last night, John Cooper. No. Nah, I think he's just no. got, I think he's got a bit of the dead eye. <laughs> yeah, no. no. I don't know. That's not you're not, you're, I don't think you're accurately going to read a coach from the television I think he's got the broadcast. dead face, man. No. Like, like, nervous. Uh, there's people that you know that they have just like they have the the resting dead face. I think John's one of those people. I think that's a emotionless two time back to back Stanley Cup champion. I agree. Coach. I was surprised. So, so what is he? I don't know why. So, I don't so know why. what is he going to say <laughs> when the Leafs sure. take Game Six? We gave them Congrats. the series. Congrats. What do you guys think about John Cooper's decision to deploy Corey Perry on the six on four, uh, six on five? When you uh, pull the goalie, Corey Perry's your guy coming off the bench. I, 19 goals this year. Yeah, I think, uh, I think everyone's disrespecting Corey Perry. I saw some of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 19. He was, if I'm not mistaken, he was Dallas's extra attacker in the Stanley Cup final in the bubble in 2020. Okay. Like, if Corey Perry is going to score anywhere, it's 
in the muck like the like the rat he is escaping mm-hmm. with a slice of pizza you you let you let Tampa's usual suspects work the puck around and when they fire it on and there's a rebound I mean who's better who's his, better on his Tampa his body him and, him and Braden Point his body may not be what it used to be but I don't think his his timing or his hockey sense is off at all Stand and still th- banging it yeah and he's been to two Stanley Cup finals in a row just like the Lightning have I think I think Corey yeah. Perry I actually like it. I think it's a. I think you do, and and I I think he's deserved it. Um, he's played a pretty good series. Yeah. Braden Point, on the other hand, uh, haven't seen as much. Better. He's looking better. He was good on Sunday. He was it's, really good. The Leafs have done a. I don't know what it is. I don't know if this is the Leafs doing it or the or the Lightning not doing it, but uh, Braden Point has been gaining all these zone entries. I've found getting it deep, flying in with speed, and he's got no one with him. Mm. Like he's got no su- support mm-hmm. and it just feels like Braden point needs to be more than your line chain specialist. If, if you're the, the Tampa Bay lightning, he's, he's a player. I don't think they've utilized very well. Yeah. I wonder if for game six, I mean, this is finally time for them to make an adjustment in the lineup. They, have, they haven't made a single change at forward through si- uh, five games. What would you change? That's a great question. Uh, it's a pretty good lineup. <laughs> Um, it is a pretty good lineup. You know, a lot of there's been a lot of talk about the penalties in this in this series, and actually throughout the playoffs. And it's interesting. Um, uh, I I get tweets like this. These guys, like at Adam Wild, just get their opinions from trending hockey Twitter and have successfully ruined playoff hockey. All series fans are complaining about the officiating because it's very bad and the product is awful. So I just what? want to say I want to thank you. I will take credit for how the refs are calling the game. What they're arguing. Essentially, the argument is that people like myself, who said just call the game the way the game's supposed to be called, I got the NHL to change its ways. But what actually happened, and (laughs) the reason I'm bringing this up is because Freege mentioned it during the second intermission yesterday. Apparently, there was a meeting at the end of the season last year when they were talking about the rules, and several players stood up and said, "Please just call the standard in the playoffs." And they're like, "Are you sure?" And they're like, "Yes." Please don't put the call the standard. Several players include Connor McDavid, who was one of who the was, most vocal people about uh, getting the. Who could fucking red, blame red him? In the playoffs. Here, do you, do you want me to uh, here? What do, what do you guys think of my shiny tinfoil hat? Let's hear it. Part of the reason the Leafs are getting so many calls against them is they were the ones whining about this. Well, so were the Oilers. I I've heard that from other people. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. So have I. I got the reception on my shiny tinfoil hat. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that wouldn't shock me. Yeah. It's, it, the NHL me. Who's taking more? has been putting this series on a spotlight and how they're calling the playoffs because the most eyeballs are on it and they are calling the most penalties in this series for a reason. Which is so weird because uh, is the some theory. other series are anarchy. Mm-hmm. Um, what, Oilers, Kings? That was, dude, Darnell Nurse headbutted. Hold on, hold on, no. Oh, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know, I know, I was just using it as a small example. I will headbutt you. I'll, I'll, and I won't even get a call from player safety. That would hurt. Okay. They'd only find me 100 bucks. Now that we're talking about headbutts, can you come here for a sec? Oh, relax. <laughs> what are you doing? He's, he's, got a, he's oh. had a piece of fluff in his eyebrow oh, the whole show. I thought you were going to say I had a butt chin or what, something. you think it was going to smack you? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, come you, here. I don't know, you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I get a little grumpy when I'm tired. Do you know the four steps, five steps to being a man? Uh, be a clean man. That is, be Adam Wild. Nope. Be, what? Nope. That's not step one. Well, listen, I might use these five steps, but you want to lather on the new ultra premium Manscaped body wash with aloe vera and sea salt. Ooh. Then you want to apply the two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, which Steve uses and smells great. And I only I only use your head as an example because I walked by you once and you smelled great. Number three, hop out of the shower, protect yourself with Manscaped aluminum-free deodorant. Also use that. Step four, if you have tattoos or you like me and you have dry skin, use the hydrating body moisturizer spray that's infused with the power of red algae from the Pacific Ocean. And number five, apply the Manscaped lip balm that has a matte finish so your lips can look good but not shiny. You want to be plump but maybe not shimmer. Plump. All I'm saying is you should go to manscaped.com and use that promo code. What is it? Dangle? Dangle! That's right. 20% off and free shipping with the promo code Dangle. Manscaped.com. Are you unsure? I know, Are you right? unsure of the promo code? It's a this. bit! <laughs> oh, 20, yeah, sure. 20% sure. off and free shipping. Promo code Dangle at Manscaped.com. It is time to get clean. Our next partner, pretty cool product, Athletic Greens. You've heard us talk about it before. We're talking about better gut health, more energy, stronger immune system, really easy, natural way to get the vitamins that you need. 
And, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, especially as you, um, Jesse doesn't know what this is like, but as you get older, as you get in your mid-30s, you start to think about your health. I'm like, you start three years younger. You start looking down the hallway at the colonoscopy that's waiting for you at 40 years old, and you go, how do I help that? <laughs> Athletic Greens is how you help that, okay? So, it's lifestyle-friendly, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, contains less than a gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, and no artificial anything. And it tastes good. Colonoscopy. Well, it's important. You got to think about that. Now, right now, it's time to reclaim your health all over your body. We should do a live colonoscopy on the show. We shouldn't. No. no. Radio people have done that for generations, and they need what? to stop. Yes. Oh, my God. They need to stop. Tay, make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash SDP. Again, athleticgreens.com slash SDP to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate nutritional insurance. Um, uh, <laughs> Connor McDavid, uh, obviously one of those people that has a lot of power. Adam Wilde, another person has a lot of power. And you're wearing blue and orange. And I changed. Yeah, that's right. McDavid, I, Goku, I, lots of powerful. People. I just want to say I'm I'm happy to be the first one on the show to change the NHL. That will always be my trophy. <laughs> Can I get a trophy? Can you guys make me a trophy? Yes. Thank you. Appreciate that. The, the big for changing. The NHL. It's me. How many numbers and letters are in that guy's Twitter handle? Uh, uh, Russian. There flags. are five. Letters and four numbers. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a lot. It's still, if you have over five letter numbers now, I, I, I can't trust you. Yeah. I can't trust that you're real. His, his banner is a fuck Trudeau flag. Probably. I don't know. Um, Loves Canada. Let's talk about the gong show Big that is Edmonton, LA. Edmonton, LA. Edmonton. Oh, now we're talking about it. Yeah. No. Well, Edmonton blows out Los Angeles. Los Angeles shuts out Edmonton. And then we all wait for game five. And here's the thing. Troy Stetcher, who didn't even start the series playing, scores the first goal. Like a, just a wild way to start it. Isn't that how the playoffs work? Always. Always. And and here's the thing about this game is that, you know, Edmonton did have to come back. Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl did everything they could to win this game. There is not a single thing that you can pin on those two. No. They have been unbelievable. You see McDavid's quote? Just couldn't keep the puck out of the net. We scored enough. Four should be enough. Four should be enough. I saw, him, I saw the press conference. Ooh. Oof. Now... Okay, I want to ask about that because is that defensive systems? Is that Mike Smith, who's been great and sometimes he not? Been, he's been the better goaltender. Mm -hmm. We've series. seen Cal Peterson this series because Quick has been a little shaky. And Smith made more stops last night. Was, so that's got to be the defense. You think? Yeah, I think that's who McDavid's calling out because Jay Woodcroft in the late second i forget if it was late second or early third he put dry and mcdavid together and they went off and scored of course those three goals like that's he of course he was did. he was out of options with the rest of the team and he said you guys go out there just do your thing go all-star mode and they did it how funny and is it should have been enough to win imagine you're coaching the bakersfield condors <laughs> and then you get to go i think i'm gonna put leon dry and connor mcdavid Together. Automatic cheat code. Wait, yeah. cheat what does code. everyone think of that? Yeah. They should literally be allowed to play that music <laughs> while they're on the ice. It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> they, they, well, and that's how it looked. And, and it should be enough. There's, yeah. It should be enough. And here's what this is what I wanted to ask because, first off, I also want to shout out Zach Hyman, who's had a great series. Oh, He's been him, so man. great. The takeaways are great. He's so good at putting a player off the puck just before they're about to do something with it and causing turnovers. He's yeah. so good at that. Yeah, smart but the, player. here's the thing that bugs me about the Connor McDavid quote. He, what happened in overtime? Uh, Keith got beat on a weird route. Evander oh, Kane yeah. blew a tire. And he blew a tire. And Evander Kane, call, call me crazy, does it? I see that. I seem to see that a lot. He scored a million goals in the I series. know, but he also does blow a tire a lot. I blame the play more on Keith. Yeah. I thought, I, I mean, thought no, Kempe I, made a nice play. But the Keith. turnover starts with Evander Kane falling for no reason. It's, it's and I'm not saying you, I guess you blame the guy, but you, it does happen. Am it, I crazy, Oilers it, fan? It should be, it's a mistake, but it's one that the Oilers should have been able to recover from. Right, but, right. And, okay, and that turnover, Adam, uh, you should be the one hammering this. That turnover was caused because they started with the Dano line. And they shut down the 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 very beginning of the overtime, and then they got a turn. They forced a turnover and led right to a goal. It was an unbelievable defensive plays by uh, L.A. that turned into offense. Was it Dry Saddle McDavid Kane? Uh I don't know. I don't know. And Keith, I don't remember. Well, because I was going to say the lowest overall pick on that forward line is fourth. Wow, 
Uh, like, awesome. holy shit. Um, it must have been. Hold on. It, well, Adam, if defense is what's costing them this series, in game six, they might be fucked. So let's, you're, you're referring to the fact that today there will be a hearing uh, for Darnell Nurse after he headbutted an LA Kings player. Is there going to be a hearing? There, well, uh, according, according to Twitter, there it, will be it was, oh. Yeah, they tweeted about it on the player safety Twitter. I guess Adam. Will be DOPS, there. right? Um, Dopes. Yeah, but you go back and watch it. Um, like, okay, it's the playoffs. It's game six. I don't know. Like any other time of year, that's a thousand percent a suspension. Dude, one of the tallest players in the league. He'll have a hearing today for headbutting LA's Philip Deneau. I, I hearing hearing means in person, right? Uh, no, not necessarily. Like okay, they haven't too. said. They said they haven't said either way. If it was in person, they would have said it. In in person, okay. So it'll be under five games, obviously, and it should be. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, maybe guaranteed, right? <clears throat> so for that goal on the ice, we have McDavid. What site is this? We have it's just the shift charts. Oh, wow. Uh, NHL.com provides all the shift charts for every game. Mm. You can this go is NHL.com now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no this, they've always had this. Oh. Yeah, you go and you look and see the shifts. and It looks like Morse play. code. They, uh, they do a great job tracking it. Anyways, on the ice for the goal, Hyman, Kane, and McDavid. So they went back to the classic first line. It's a good line. Yeah. But that's, that's who got beat there. The, yeah, the no line was on, and then they, they, sh they shut them down. They switched off, and... Mm. Kempe came on, he scored. Well, and Dano might have neutralized their best defender for game six. Because, like, it, Darnell Nurse is one of the tallest players in the league, and he headbutt Philip Dano in the chin from underneath. Uh, there's no accidental there. There's no question regarding intention. The only thing that'll save him is Dano wasn't hurt on the play. That's the only thing that's going to save him. Because if we're going by the act alone, it's a suspension 10 times out of 10. It's an elimination game in the playoffs. That is, uh, you know what? That's one of those ones where I do not envy George Peros. Because... Um, damned if you do, damned if you don't on that Well, one. I think the right call here is the hardest one to make. I would call it a suspension, but I wouldn't want to call it a suspension. Dude, you can't headbutt a player in the face he had put him in the chin from underneath jesse has it up that's insane and like it's not just his head collides with his face <laughs> it's very clearly like a ramming motion he comes from underneath yeah man that's a, that's a wild visual that's a <laughs> that's a wild visual man that's a wild visual i don't know what peros is gonna do and Surely we'll get an answer today, because if I'm Edmonton, I'm demanding an answer today. You can't give me one tomorrow. No, I, no, I gotta have gotta a chance know. to plan here. Wow, Oof, that's a crazy wow. play. That not that is not being talked about enough this morning. Why? Yeah, why is uh, listen? Like, I know Deneau's a pain in the ass in the playoffs. Oh, like he slashed him pretty good oh there too. Oh my god, yeah, I haven't even stick, seen though. the slash. It was in the stick. But it's an aggressive swing. It is, but like it's a two minute minor at most. Yeah, which he didn't get. Which he didn't get, and he was. Up. But I just, Dano is like I, I like when I tweeted out my gra graphic. I said, don't a underestimate playoff Philip Dano. Mm -hmm. He oh, scored know. goals in this series. He shut down play. He's been amazing. And maybe Darnell Nurse has just had a. I don't know if I guess. Well, and they're down three one at the time, dude. That's a crazy. Visual. That's a. That's crazy. It's it's. Um, I know Darnell Nurse is tough, but I've never seen him do. Does he do... St no, he just this lost is, his cool, man. This is a player who has not been in this situation a lot in his career, and it's game five of the playoffs. You're coming down to facing elimination. They're on the power play. You're worried. You lose your cool for half a second. You headbutt okay. a guy. No so here's, here's the, it's brutal. That, right? Here's what we got. Here's what we got, okay? Here's what we got. We got two scenarios. You're going into game six. You're down a game. Nobody is going to be happy with a $5,000 suspension. $5,000 fine. fine. Well, oh, sorry, fine, fine right? <laughs> well, who, does, who, do he, who does he think he is? Jamie Benn? Yeah. Um, so if Darnell <laughs> Nurse misses this, how, how rough is this and how much does this play into... Like, listen, whether LA wins or they don't win, uh, and obviously it would be a huge emotional one if Edmonton wins without Darnell Nurse. They, they might use that to... But let's say LA wins this. 
going into the summer, that's going to be the play everybody's talking about. And it's crazy because... And we've seen his, that with Kadri. His, 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 his extension kicks in next year. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, he's a beloved player. He doesn't normally do this. No, They're going to find a way to blame it on Mike Smith. Really? I think they got a scapegoat. No. Mike I, Smith? I mean, you got to look at the bigger picture here. Like, this series isn't on Darnell Nurse head headbutting Philip Deneau. No, but, the but, but neither was either series Kadri getting suspended against Boston. No. There was many factors that played but, into it. But this But I'm this, just saying these are the these are the heat points, right? They're the touch points. Yeah. Well, how about this? How about the Oilers rise to the occasion? Which they Fair. did in this game. At they, this they, moment they when he headbutts Dano, they're down 3-1 in the second. When they turned it on was the third period. Yep. I don't think they're going to they I don't think Kadri is nurse, you know? I don't think the no. Oilers look at this as uh as nurse losing his cool all the time. We need to get rid of him. I think it's a bad play. Well, if he, he does suspended. it next year, they might. But uh, yeah, if he Kadri, gets suspended here, Kadri was the Leafs' second and third line center, and he played three out of fourteen playoff games. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. not the same. You know what I mean? Um, but you know. What I, by the way, I, for anybody that's going to jump on me, I'm not no. directly comparing them. No, no. just so we're we fucking clear on that. No, we're talking about. I know, but you know, I have to put that out there. I'm yeah. free arguing. I'm wild. I'm free, free arguing with Twitter. <laughs> hey, oh, piece of shit. Um, no, but um, you know what it reminds me of? And I actually forgot about this. I interviewed Shane Corson recently. Oh. And I forgot this happened because I was talking to him about the Leafs Islander series from all those years ago and how he shut, shut down, down Alexi, Yashin. Alexi Yashin. Do you remember what he did in game six? Uh, no. He got into a fight with Eric Cairns, which is a genuinely stupid decision, and kicked him. He kicked him in the shin and was suspended Jesus. for game seven. Ooh. Which is akin to like That's Philip bad. Deneau fighting Darnell Nurse, kicking him, and then being suspended for game seven. So you talk about like a shutdown center not being able to play against McDavid, right? For game seven. But the Leafs rose to the occasion and won. The Oilers Whoa. need to harness some of what got them back into this game. Steal one in LA, and then you get Game Seven at home, okay. which should always be. Your do you match. start McDavid and Drysaddle together, or do you go back to your regular lines, which they shifted to, I guess, in overtime in the rest of the third, or do you just pair them together for the rest of the game? You just say, "Hey, please just w- outscore your problem." I would almost do it at like at certain points. I'd be like, "Okay, here's a five minute stretch in the first. We're gonna run them together for three or four shifts." And then I'm going to break them up again. And then, and then I would do it in the second. I would do it in the third. See if you could get goals in bunches mm-hmm. and then spread out the talent They're to try to shut LA down. Yeah. yeah. If Nurse is suspended, maybe there's a lesson to be gleaned from the St. Louis Blues where you could dress seven guys, do it by committee, seven defensemen, I mean, and your, for, your fourth line has one of McDavid and Dreisaitl and or Dreisaitl on it at all times, right? So it's, oh. so it's McDavid, Drysaddle, third line, and then the fourth line has one of them. Interesting. McDavid, Drysaddle, third line, and then the, the other one of them. Mm-hmm. Right? So you could, you could do McDavid, Drysaddle, third, McDavid. McDavid, Drysaddle, third, Drysaddle. McDavid, dry, like, the f- what's the point <laughs> of having a fourth line if you have those two, for yeah. God's sake? Yeah. Go, I mean, they might be one of the only teams in the league where it makes sense to do that every game. <laughs> I also found it hilarious. That the narrative is, hey, we got Duncan Keith for our playoff run, and he's going to be the stalwart on the back end. He's going to lead us to the championship Classic. because he's been there before, and he's the one who got walked on the last play of the game in overtime. <sighs> the only undefeated person in the history of planet Earth is Father Time. That's man. That was one of the most feared playoff players for a. Generation. He was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And unbelievable. He's thirty nine. Like, what do you? Is he thirty nine? He's thirty eight or thirty nine. Dude, he was drafted a very long time ago. He was drafted, he was drafted <laughs> like 2003 or something like that. All the guys from his draft class are, almost all of them are retired. How many are left? Can't be a lot. 30, he'll be 39 in July. Wow. Yeah. And like. Drafted in 2002. Her, oh Where were you guys in God. 2002? Grade nine. Cheering on. Grade, <laughs> how we were graduating grade eight, going into grade nine. No, we, yeah. In June. In grade eight. In June 2002. How many, how many games has Keith played a regular season mm-hmm. how many 12 56 12 56 and how many regular uh playoffs uh 140 i'm surprised it's only 140 to be honest so we're looking at in the neighborhood of like 1400 games mm-hmm. right 
a lot of nonsense given and taken. Hard miles. Hard miles. Extremely hard miles. Rugged granite miles. Uh, and uh, <laughs> granite. Granite. I just named the hardest thing I can. Dude, dude I, <laughs> I, I I went to bed at three. Like that's good. Granite. Yeah. God bless producer I, Drew who I, went to bed at like four. Um, I I want to ask about the Boston Carolina series next because has Tony D'Angelo out Marchand Marchand? And let me ask you why. First off, the things got heated, I think, game three or game four, when Marshan literally said, you're a racist to Tony D'Angelo. We think. It's game four. We think. It looked like, if you're lip reading it, it was a chirp. Uh, D'Angelo, you know, said that he was excited to go back to Carolina because the building was louder. Boston media really got on him for that. And, you know, Boston media, they're, they're about Boston teams. And, and one of the things that, if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, that you're missing is that, you know, the Boston Bruins have a local broadcast. That's fucking pro Boston. The Bruins. You know, that the, the Nesson broadcast is Bruins, Bruins, Bruins. The other team doesn't exist. Everything the other team does is shitty. Yep. B R O O N S. In in, tr- Bruins. in Toronto, there's so much money to be made off of the Leafs being a national spectator game because there's Leaf fans all over the country that, you know, you you don't have a local broadcast because it's like, well, we can make less money doing a local one, or we could do a national game, but we can't be Leafs homers about it. And which is a bummer because Leaf, if you listen to the Leafs broadcast like on the radio, like Joe Bowen, man, it's 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 Electric. Homer Central and it's fucking awesome. They should have both. They should have they both. They should have a local Leafs television broadcast. I, I agree guess. with you. I would love a local Leafs broadcast. Don't think we're gonna get one, uh, but we deserve one. Some would Th- say it's Steve Dorman. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, your stream is the closest thing we have. Yeah, it's amazing, and I'm professional. You are. I mean, listen, you uh, you uh, articulated what was happening in those games perfectly. You could call the game and be the color commentary. Um, I, dude, those are... You don't understand what it's like to call those games with stone silence in your ears. I literally... The only thing I hear is the producer. So you don't even get to hear the, the game I don't at hear, all. I don't hear no. the arena. I don't hear the puck. I don't hear... Like, the... I would have known the uh, Hedman goal went in because of the post. I didn't know it went off the post until I watched. Why don't you the guys highlights. change that? I don't know, dude. We have, we're, we are <laughs> slowly conquering our tech issues. So oh, okay. one step at a time. Um. Fair. So so you know we're, do, De- we're doing better. D'Angelo goes back, says Carolina's building's louder. Boston media just gets up on him on, for everything. And here's the thing: sometimes two villains go at it, and you just kind of sit back and watch. Heel versus. And and I think if if we're talking about a match. The, uh, I don't think we're, we're cheering for anybody in this fight, but D'Angelo definitely won. He got the game-winning power play goal last night. And, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I mean, listen, I, I would imagine that Boston comes back pretty strong in game six, but they weren't good enough last night. Carolina outclassed them. Oh, and Anti Ranta, everybody's asking about Freddie Anderson. Why? Let him get healthy. Anti Ranta's been great. Yeah. Well, and Kachetkov is fine, too. Carolina yes. doesn't have a problem in that. I guess that's why they didn't need Nadelkovic in the first place. Dude, they are. We were wrong. Three starting goaltenders. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. You have, you have Ranta, who's, I think, at worst, a 1B. Freddie, who's a certified starter. And Kachekov, who's the starter of the, of the future. God. They're really lucky there. And, I mean, D'Angelo beat Marchand the way he had to, which was on the ice. All that, all that off-ice shit. Brad Marchand is the game. And the second you think about it, you lose. Oh and, wow, that's a great way to put it. And when I yeah. saw when I saw D'Angelo doing that in the media, I'm like, oh, you young man, you lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you when lost. he threw his stick on the empty net, like that's when okay, he got under your skin and you're showing it. Yep. And then he came out next game, and yeah, when he opened that game on the Slavin play, like his his assist on that, he he drove he drove the play there, and he's the one that created the first two goals of the game. And it's it's a shame racists are good at hockey, but <laughs> but D'Angelo, yeah, we can't really gloss over that, eh? No, D'Angelo, he he won the hockey battle there by beating him on the ice, and Carolina was so much better than Boston last night. Yeah, but now Boston on the brink of elimination in Boston, in Boston. Ooh. Has that bulletin board material? Uh, Boston's going to be playing with six players all game. <laughs> it's. I think this one's going seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're Rod Brindamore, how do you bottle what Tony D'Angelo has in Game Six? That's going to be hard to keep under wraps. That's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult to get the same guy you got in Game Five in Game Six. Mm. That's that's going to be Rod Brindamore's top task. You don't really have to worry about 
many other guys. It's Carolina. <laughs> the, the, I have to say the Boston fan chirps at D'Angelo have been hysterically funny online. Somebody asked, hey, D'Angelo, who's louder? Um, Carolina's fans or the January 6th insurrection? <laughs> oh, gosh. I was like, oh my so, God. It was just like... We forget, too, <laughs> that Tony D'Angelo is making a million dollars for one year because of all of his off-ice problems. He yeah, had to yeah. sign just a prove your, you can not be a locker room cancer deal yeah. and prove, prove to us that you can play on the ice. He got bought out uh, from... He, he signed an extension with the Rangers, a $9 million extension, and he got bought out, I think, after three games. Yeah. Like, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, and then he said a million dollars. Yeah, that's yeah. Crazy. Now, I want to ask you, okay, you go to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. Mm-hmm. Okay, so tonight's game, I want to go through a couple of tonight's games. Um, I, you know, I was going to bring up the Blues and, and Wild, too. Let me just do that for a second. Every time one team wins in this series, it feels like that, that should be it. They win so convincingly. And yet, the next game, it's the other team that wins. It's a little bit like the Tampa Leaf series. Until yeah, tonight. yeah. So, Kaprizov, the way that game started with Kaprizov, the way he scored, I'm like, this is not even close. There's been two hat tricks. Yeah. In that series. And there could have been two hat tricks last night. Tarasenko got one. Yep. Kaprizov was a goal short. He has seven oh, goals. Tarasenko got one? Tarasenko oh, so got one in the last three. goal. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, Holy so, shit. and that's the thing. The Blues just came back and roared back, and that's what it is now. And you're, and you're, I, every time I watch, I'm like, but last game, it was the other team. Yeah. Who's controlling the series? Hard to get a read, eh? It is. Yeah. I saw this on Twitter. And I don't know who tweeted it or, or if I read it in, in an article. But it's a shame that Tarasenko was just available in the draft lottery or in the uh, expansion draft for Seattle. And they could have just taken this man and had them on, his, on their team. If this was, if this was Vegas' management who were running this expansion draft for Seattle, they would have had Tarasenko and it would have been a star and he would have been on the team. But that's not the way they decided to build their team. And it's such a shame because they could have had all these great players. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they didn't do a very good job. I'm, I don't want <laughs> to I don't want to dump on the Kraken in our, in our Blues wild breakdown, but Garbage. there are some guys. Matt Duchesne, unbelievable could, regular season. Could have been a Seattle Kraken. Could either of those players have done it the way they're doing it now? In Seattle. If Tarasenko and Duchesne were playing together, maybe. Tarasenko's Tarasenko wherever he goes. Like, he's proven to us this playoffs that he's still the guy. He wasn't even Tarasenko in St. Louis last yeah. year. Yeah, but, was, and, but he's come why back. He available. He's come back. What? Which it's, He didn't lose it. It's been there. The only people who called that were the Blues. Mm-hmm. Actually, they didn't even really because they made him available. <laughs> nah, they sat No on one it. called this. There's no one called no it, one. But it. But it was still in there. It was still if there's in a there. star player available, if there's whoever's yeah. the 33rd team, I'm just telling you, take over. That team's unreal, man. That team's Blues so are cool. awesome. They're so are the Wild. Holy shit. Uh, producer Drew making a great point. If LA beats the Oilers, uh, in theory, their next opponent could be the Dallas Stars if they find a way to knock off the Flames. Oh. Meanwhile, Colorado, who should be rewarded for how well they did in the regular season and sweeping their first round opponent is going to get the winner of Minnesota St. Louis. Oh my God. That fucking sucks. <laughs> That's brutal. Two teams with two good goalies each and like to grinding and Oh, you got it. You got to go the NFL route and recede after every, uh, after every playoff round. If Calgary gets eliminated, you have to go, okay, Colorado's the best team. The, the NHL doesn't like to reward standouts, though. They like every flower to be the same height. Oh. And if one gets a little too high, they lop it off. Your regular season should mean something. And these teams that are accomplish something in the regular season and get these higher seeds, they should be rewarded in the playoffs. And they should always face the correct opponent based on seeding. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. ridiculous. I think the Flames might have something to say about that. So the Penguins and Rangers, another just bonker series. Um, so fun. Right? So fun. Jari was on ice this morning. He's skating around practice. So I wonder. play in this series. Um, Louis Domingue, though, uh, pretty confident man. Have you ever seen him? Uh, <laughs> the, he's, he's pretty Who? like Louis Domingue. I don't know. Oh, Alan Walsh. No, <laughs> Alan Louis Walsh. Domingue. <laughs> Louis Domingue. That's right. I forgot. Like, confident as hell and 3-1 three three on the Rangers and Shosturkin and Gior- Georgiev getting lit up. Oh, boy. That series is a heart attack. Does it end in five? Because here's the thing. Obviously, I'm looking at I'm looking at sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN right now. Obviously, the Penguins are favored, but not by all that much. They're a plus 105. Like, it's not crazy. It's in Madison Square Garden, too. Gerard Gallant has to do a good job here. This has to be his masterpiece, because you could argue he's been outcoached the whole time. 
Mike Sullivan obviously has the better team. And what saved the Rangers early in the series was they had the better goalie. Well, they don't anymore. <laughs> or at very least, um, that goalie has been neutralized. I mean, I would still take Shesterkin over to Ming. You probably take a Vesna winner over any team third stringer. Right. But he, I'll tell he you, hasn't been that in this year. I'll tell you who I'm taking over everybody. Michael like, Bunting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we got to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> the best forward in the playoffs right now has been Sidney Crosby. Yes. By simply, when you if, go if we yes. want to go by the simplest metric, points. Sidney Crosby right now has nine points in four games. Is that good? That's 2.25 points per game, which leads all forwards in the playoffs. And he's only played four games. It's officially put him in the top 10 in playoff scores all time, by the way. Just ahead of Doug Gilmore and a couple other players. Doug Gilmore has 188, and I think Sydney's at 191 now. That's so stupid. Like, dudes in the 80s got like 20 goals during a playoff. I know. Yeah. It's like a, it's crazy. Like, a second season. Gretzky has over 300 points in the playoff. I'm surprised it's only 300, honestly. Like, oh my God. Bananas. So Out of those uh, nine points, eight have been even strength, which leads the entire playoffs amongst everybody. That's Ooh. fucking he is, crazy. He's been on a mission. Dude, whoa. He's not going to let this team lose. No. And I'm, if I'm a Rangers fan, I'm very worried what this Penguin squad is going to do. Like, all year, we were having the... who It wasn't just the MVP conversation, because I don't think he was in the MVP conversation, but we were having the who's the best player in hockey conversation. And I don't know if we brought up Crosby once. And mm. when I saw him in like the first two games of the series, I was like, I'm the one who's always barking at people not to forget this guy. And I forgot him. Like is Sidney Cross. Okay. I'm going to ask a wild question for 2022. Okay. Is Sidney Crosby the most underrated player in the national hockey league? Uh, he might be. Okay. That's if, a really good question. If you have him outside of the top 10, the answer is yes. Oh, you're, you're a maniac if you have him outside the top 10. Yeah, but we would have earlier this season. No, we would not have had him outside of the top. Uh, I think we might have. Outside of the top 10? Yeah, because there's a point where you could go, uh, Just this isn't in order, but you could throw in Makar, McDavid, Ovechkin would have been ahead of Crosby, <laughs> Matthews, uh, Drysidle. Drysidle. There's your top five. Shesterkin. Ooh, McKinnon, Yossi for the run he was on. Oh, I think people would place it because he's defensive too. Better than too. Crosby, guys. I, I think, don't think, I think people would have said that. I think that a lot of people at the end Kutrov, of the season. Hedman. At no, I was going to go with Stamkos. No, no, no. no. The season. No, the, the, okay. At the last ten games of the season, every single game, Stamkos had three points or more. So here's what's he had the greatest run in NHL history behind Yari Curry. I know. Here's <laughs> here's what screwed Crosby is he missed an awkward amount of games. Mm -hmm. He missed uh 13, which is not insignificant, but it's also not like oh the Penguins missed him for two months. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's 13 games. So he played 69. Nice. Mm -hmm. He had 84 points. Really I, good. I, he cruises over 100. Guys, I think he cruises guys, over 100. If, if, if anybody had him legitimately outside of the top 10, maybe top five. I'll grant you top five. Top five. Is top the, 10? The 10 was difficult to get. To. Top 10? Watch the game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when, watch hard. We got to like eight. Come on. We got to a solid eight. You got to think about where our mindset was in like February. Yeah. I think we might have had him outside. No the way. Yep. No way. I'm, I'm struggling for two more guys. That might be right. Top eight. That's close. Like where you? It's like, close. It's, yeah. With no offense to noted Alan Walsh client like Huberto or Barkov, I wouldn't. Even, oh my god! Not over. Not over Crosby though. No, but you got to think good. about what we were thinking when nobody was talking about Cross. Huberto was probably four or five in the MVP. But that running. doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we wouldn't look. We would look at him as a better player. Than no, Crosby. but we would have been doing the your argument for McDavid in terms of who's the best player right now, and we it was probably Austin would have had. Crosby outside of that top 10. Ooh. I 100% I agree with that. It's, I think, I Maybe we got too used to. Necessarily, but I think mm -hmm. the majority of hockey fans, they would have come up with a bunch of names before they Dude, hit Crosby. Did yeah. we just get used to Sidney Crosby being this good and take it for granted? Is that what's yes. happened? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Underrated Sidney Crosby. The same will happen to McDavid and arguably already has. Uh, but uh, man, springtime is Crosby time, baby. So here is the, here are the, here are the lines again. Uh, sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. So you got Penguins Rangers tonight. Penguins are up a little to, to take the series, although uh, it's it's the closest game so far. What's crazy, who do you think's favorite in the Caps-Panthers series? 
Panther. To win? Yeah. The, the series. The game tonight. And yeah. by the way, it's tied 2-2. It's in Florida, isn't it? I believe it is, yeah. It's got to be Florida. No, it's game five. It'd be in... Uh... It'd be in Florida. Yeah, Florida's the favorite. Yeah, of yeah. course. Okay. So I just thought that was interesting because the Caps have outplayed them the whole way. Florida saved their entire season with two minutes to go in the game four. I do. They, were, they were down and they needed to score and then force over. Like, I'm shocked that it's that much. Yeah. I do think... I'm shocked that it's that much. Sorry, by the way, the I'm wrong. The Rangers were favored over Pittsburgh tonight, which I think is wild. Home team. Okay, Tight okay. Series. So, so yeah. let's, let's get back to Pittsburgh... Cam- or sorry, Panthers, Capitals. My bad. Uh, so, it's... I do think it's funny, and the Florida Panthers uh, should be giggling a little bit about this, that I was like, well, there's no three-on-three overtime. And, well, they did just find, <laughs> they did just find five on five. And they were able to basically save their season. Did anybody tweet you that? That's very funny. Uh, probably. Dude, I haven't been able to keep up. Mm. First round's chaos. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, can you hear? Can you tell? No, I'm, ha- I'm having a lot of fun. Um, lastly here, um, you've got the Flames, obviously, favored to take Dallas. That series to me, though, I mean, it's tied. Uh, and I know Calgary had a very convincing win last game, and I know they're the home team. But Dallas has surprised Calgary, I think, and surprised a lot of people. You want to talk about underrated? Probably are the Dallas Stars the most underrated NHL team, based on how they've played in the uh, in the league this uh, this, hmm. this playoffs. At, they have to be at least this playoffs. I mean, the Kings have got to be up there too. Although I had faith in the Kings, let me just say maybe biggest surprise. On most underrated. Yeah, because I don't think anybody yeah. gave Dallas a shot. They, they like, Four and out, five and out, something like I that. I want to look at all the brackets in the SDPN uh, bracket challenge and how many of those had Dallas over Calgary. It's got to be like a handful or like a very low percentage. I don't think I had any sweep. But uh, it doesn't surprise me that Dallas is playing the way they're playing. I'm surprised that it's working. Why is that? Because it's the Flames. And they should be able to just steamroll over them not because the stars are bad but because the flames are that good i don't think anybody accounted for dallas having the better goaltending in the series jake ottinger has been incredible i thought he'd be good obviously like i think he's a very good goalie probably underrated goalie but i didn't see him out dueling markstrom playoff um, vesna what is to the jake point? ottinger yeah <laughs> first four games of vesna yeah. playoffs i'm giving it to jake ottinger. i mean that's fair <laughs> Not Kale McCarr for being the first player to ever have, uh, first defenseman to ever have 10 points in or, the first four games. Or your nah. favorite player ever, uh, Billy Husso. Billy Husso. Oh, oh Vesna, Vesna. Uh, Bennington's won two straight games. I'm not complaining. Uh, I don't remember what I was about to say. It was about uh, Markstrom. Flames. No. Ottinger. Hmm. Something that I don't remember. I'm fried. <laughs> That's okay. I'm fried. I don't remember what I was about to say. Wow. Well, uh, how, do we, how do you expect that series to go? Me or you hit Steve? Flames win. Both of you. I think the Flames ultimately win. Mm-hmm. Um, but this could go seven. And I think it will be right down to the wire. Please no. What do you mean? <laughs> the, the hockey's awful. Oh, the, it's boring. Yeah. It's, it's boring. I mean, it's, 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 is it as bad as the Dallas jersey? Which is worse, the Dallas Stars jersey or the type of hockey they play? Uh, oh. This is that's a question for the comment section, by the way. No, I want you to answer. Answer me honestly. What debate this? I would like to know. Discord, please get on this. You'd you'd watch like the what was that? The ninety nine Stanley Cup final, Jer- Jersey two thousand. Was it New Jersey? The Jersey, Jersey, uh, Jersey, Dallas. Oh, pain is uh, like you. Pain. You'd watch that today, thinking it was a movie, like a poorly filmed movie, like just the the style, the amount of shit you could get away with. Remember how huge jerseys used to be? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was that was a really good change the NHL made uh, a few years back, whenever that was. Um, but yeah, that was brutal. Like Dallas, bless you and everything. Uh, mix in a few goals. Only five players on the Dallas Stars have score scored a goal this entire series. Are you? F- Joe okay. Pavelski has three. Ha! <laughs> Sagan hints fast. <laughs> And uh, Raffle have one each. Bro. Joe so, Pavelski is the only player who scored more so than sh- one goal. So shut down Pavelski and you probably win. Yeah, good luck. How do you shut down a player who his bread and butter is he doesn't even really move? 
Just bread and butter as he stands right there. He's like you Western know, Tavares. How many shots does Joe Pavelski have this playoffs? He has three goals. Four. Because he's tipped a lot, hasn't he? How many shots does Two. he have? Two. <laughs> he has three goals. How many shots does he have? Uh, ten. He has six shots. Oh, boy. He's shooting 50% because he doesn't do anything but smash the puck in the net. So the I, stars are awesome. I've had this conversation with a few people <laughs> over the years. I don't think deflections... I think deflections do count as shots. I don't think they should. I don't think they should. I don't I think, think they I, should either. They should be their own thing. Mm. So, like, it's not like he should have, you know, let's say he scored, uh, you know, three goals and three deflections. You give him three goals on zero shots. I don't think that makes any sense. <laughs> right. But, like, it, it's, I don't know, it just feels inaccurate. It's like, like, Tavares was awarded a goal last night. I did the puck ever hit his skate. Uh, first of all, I don't think so. Yeah. Let's say. I think Willie scored. I think Willie scored it, <laughs> but still awarded to Tavares. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Let's say it did hit Tavares' skate. Sure. <laughs> I don't believe you're allowed to be, unless you're on the bench and the other team makes a mistake, I don't think you're allowed to be awarded a goal without it counting as a shot. And I'm fairly certain when the puck goes off your skate, it counts as a shot. Mm-hmm. Because you have to, why? You have to have a it shot shouldn't. to be it credited. Should, well, goal. I know, but it should go. The shot should go to the last person. It should count as deflection. Yeah, something like. Just Do you get it, the goal? Just call. Yeah, it you get D. the goal, but like I think. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, you the what? shot should. So let's let's say Justin Hall, who by the way had an outstanding game, and we didn't get to that. In Real the yeah, he was amazing. And let me just say, I was wrong. I was wrong. Yeah. Um, Justin Hall His takes a game. shot, and Tavares tips it in. Sh Hall gets the shot counted towards him. Tavares gets the deflection counted towards him, and I bet. That would actually be a pretty useful stat. I'm sure teams keep track of it. Of like who, a if, you, if you need a yes. net print, print presence, who's who's got the most deflections? There's no way they don't. It's they have if, to. If you can think of a way to improve a stat, like just a logical way to improve a stat, uh, NHL teams probably keep it. So you guys want players to be able to score goals without having a shot on goal? You, Joe Pavelski doesn't shoot. Like, okay, when he shoots... <laughs> He's got three goals on six shots. Yeah, yeah but, but if they're deflections, and I don't know how many of them are. Right, right. But, right. like, if they're deflections, why are, we, why are we calling that a shot? He mm. didn't shoot it. He flicked at the thing. He batted it down or batted it up. Yeah, he changed the direction he of the He changed box. the direction of it. Yeah. And he's the best at it. Mm -hmm. But it's not a shot. Why are we calling it a shot? What type of shot would you call it? <laughs> is it a wrist shot, snap shot, slap shot? No, it's a fucking deflection. deflection call it what it shot. is. Yeah. yeah. No, that's interesting. I don't know. Like, oh, man, he's shooting 50%. No, he super isn't. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he scored on three shots, I can't remember the ball Yeah, I don't the have the Pavelski goal pack in front of me. I'm this, sorry. I'm purely assuming because it's Joe Pavelski. <laughs> right. I'm, I assume he's, he's scored four deflections. Chris Johnson. With three goals. The Calder Trophy nominees are Michael Bunting. Hey. Moritz Sider. And Trevor Zegers. That makes sense. Now, I, th I think it's funny that I believe Michael Bunting was born several days after Nathan McKinnon, and Nathan McKinnon won it seven years ago. Wow. Which is kind of nuts. And they went in different drafts, though. They did go in different drafts. And obviously, you know, Kyle Dubas made his play for, for Michael Bunting. I think we know where this is going. That's so funny. But I do find the Calder nominee. Do, are we going to know who finished second in, in voting? Yeah. Yeah. We, the, so, the voting's always released. So honestly, who do you give second place to? I think Sider's the winner. Although Detroit, if he does. Mm -hmm. um, but who do you give second place to? Is it Bunting or Zegers? Who do you think it's going to be? Not who you would give it to because it's clearly Bunting. <sighs> Who's going to get have, voted in second? I have Bunting coming in second. Zegers did more with less. Bunting did more of consequence. Does that make sense? Hmm. And that's not like, listen, would Zegris have done a better job on Matthews and Marner's wing? Uh, yeah, maybe. Like, would he have put up more points? Maybe slash probably. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, just because you get thrown into a certain position, it doesn't mean you're going to succeed. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, there's a lot of it. Like Nick Ritchie did not su succeed. Dude. How many line mates were they looking for for Crosby before they found Kunitz? They, and then uh, had to replace him with Gensel. Crosby's yeah. had at least two dozen line mates over his career. At least. Yeah. Like regular line mates. Um, a bunch of whom you 
like I don't even know if they made it to like 300 NHL games. You know, mm-hmm. like that guy, they they tried out a ton of uh, uh people. Um Nick Ritchie they signed with basically the expressed purpose of either playing with Matthews or Tavares and he couldn't do it. So just because Bunting put up a bunch of points with Matthews and Marner, I don't think that should take away from the votes he gets. Look, look at the goal last night. Uh, the game-winning goal. He he helped set up plays like that all season long. And do Matthews and Marner do the majority of the legwork? Yeah. Is the legwork even possible without Bunting? No. So he's not a passenger. He's, he plays a role. So you're saying Bunting over Zegers? I'm saying neither. I'm, I'm saying it's second and third, and I don't care. <laughs> because it's going to be silent. I still ask the question. Uh, bunting, because it's funny. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, with that, let's do the press conference. Hey, get all your NHL playoff action. It's sports interaction. If you're looking for action and interaction and sports, sports interaction. It's in the name. Exactly. Before the game starts, live and in play, or, you know, Betting on how your favorite player will perform. Canada plays at SIA, doing it right since 1997. 1997. 1997. Sorry, I, I get the read too. Okay, with the most competitive odds, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Head over to sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. That's right, we have a new landing page. That's oh! sportsinteraction.com slash SDPN. 19 plus, play responsibly. Guys, clients demand instant responses. They do. Now more than ever. But businesses are spread thin. And if you're losing leads from visits to your website or missing calls that could grow your business, you might want to check out Smith AI. Okay? Mm. Check this out. Smith AI is not your average receptionist service. Since 2015, they've combined the best receptionists across North America with AI technology for superior business communications and customer engagement. And here's the thing. Their friendly and professional agents will help you screen calls, get you the leads you need, complete criteria, and actually schedule appointments in your calendar. Wow. You didn't need to hit the table like that. But you're oh, so passionate. No. Subwoofer guys. Oh, be sorry. So mad. Smith AI. Work uninterrupted. Run your business with less stress and get more leads for marketing efforts. Smith AI pays for itself. And listeners will save $100 when you sign up using our promo code SDP at smith.ai. Mm-hmm. Visit smith.ai for a five star review. You can you can read all the reviews that are there. Be sure to use the code SDP. Again, it's SDP to save a hundred dollars at sign up. Don't let another day go by. Try Smith AI. How do you spell the code? SDP. Ah. Yeah. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Whether you're just a Leafs fan or you need therapy, uh, BetterHelp is the place for you. Now listen, I, I, I make a joke, but all of us on this show have been to therapy, have found it immensely useful. But the thing is, a lot of things, what, what holds people back from uh, going to therapy, is sometimes you don't want to do in person. Sometimes it's the cost. You're embarrassed that a hockey team is sending you, sending you to therapy. Maybe but then it's you that discover too. it's maybe not the hockey team and it's something else you got going. A hundred percent, right? Sometimes it's a symptom, maybe not the problem, as my therapist would say. Wow. So let's talk about BetterHelp because you can chat live you can do video sessions um but you don't have to that's the great thing i love the chat feature because not everybody's comfortable talking and sometimes you know you get it out better when you write it and uh, this is what's so great about better help so listen check out better help if you're feeling a little stressed if you're feeling like you need someone to talk to it's a tune-up for your mind it's like working out before your brain and it does does actually work and we all are uh, can attest to that much more affordable than in-person therapy as well you get matched with a therapist in under 48 hours so it's quick and this podcast is sponsored by better help and steve dangle podcast listeners get 10 percent off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sdp the presser sdp the steve dangle press conference i mentioned this earlier It's from Jonathan C. Jonathan C. on our Discord press conference channel wrote, Is there a worse whiff in recent NHL history than Ron Francis passing on Vladimir Tarasenko at the expansion draft? (laughs) A shout out to Jonathan C. for that. Does trading to Karras count as recent? Um, That wasn't really a serious question, but go ahead. Oh, (laughs) it's pretty pretty bad. Um, It's pretty bad. Dude, like, okay, yesterday was the draft lottery. La- yesterday was the draft lottery. Montreal wins. That's what I was about to bring up next. Good right. job. All right. So there you go. So Montreal gets the first overall pick in Montreal. It's, listen, it's bad news for Leaf fans, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. We're going to get to witness something really cool. 
Uh, I didn't hear Seattle get talked about once yesterday. And like fourth, fourth. Yeah. But when it comes to, um, when it comes to a not rebuilding team, Seattle's not rebuilding. They're building. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Rebuild from what? They were never built. Um, <laughs> that sort of day should should come with a lot of fanfare. We should be talking about the future of the franchise. I didn't hear any of it. I didn't hear any of it because Seattle is worse than bad. Lots of teams are bad. They're irrelevant. This summer, they need to show people why the Seattle Kraken are worth giving a damn about. Yeah, you got your first season pass, right? You got your, well, they're bad because it's their first year. Yeah, like even... And really, I wouldn't even say that was an excuse. They had good players available. They didn't take them. And then they named a guy captain and traded him for a second round pick. Like, and he's what? still awesome. And he's the best. <laughs> Love Gio. Oh, uh, dude. So- great, great move. No, no, uh, no Nick Foligno complaints there. <laughs> Shout out Montreal. We will all be there this summer to watch yeah. that first overall um, pick. Yeah, I meant to get to that in the thing. Did you guys see Gary Bettman's reaction when they got it? Oh, no. no. Oh, Montreal. Oh, well, that's... Mm-hmm. Huh. Is that what he said? Yeah, it was. And then they, I, I, I was, uh, I watched a guy and I forget. I, I meant to have it in my notes. I don't know why it's not in there. And that's why we didn't get to it. I apologize. But okay. um, I wanted you to play the clip because somebody compared and contrasted it with New Jersey New in Jersey. 2019. He was like, oh, that's great. New Jersey. Like it, was like, it was sort of like, oh, the first round picks in Canada. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> yeah, at least that's how it feels as a Canadian. You got to understand. Oh. Dude, but <laughs> over the last like dozen years, it's been a wild amount of times. In Canada? Yeah. Well, yeah, because our teams are shit and we don't fire anyone. 2022, Montreal. 2016, Leaves. Toronto. Uh, 2015. 11 to 15, Edmonton. Yeah, 15, <laughs> 11, 12, 10, Edmonton. <laughs> Holy shit. And it, it feels like we're missing one. Probably. Oh, my God. Vancouver was like second or third for Pedersen, weren't they? Or was that fifth. a fifth? Fifth. Uh- so, it was 1996, Chris Phillips to the Ottawa Senators. And from 96 to 2010, the Can- uh, Canadian team did not have a first overall pick. But then. But then we went <laughs> 2010, 11, 12, Edmonton. And then 15, Edmonton, 16, Toronto. And now 2022, Montreal. That's six times. Since 2010. Like, mm-hmm. that is a... Six since 2010 is a lot. The sheer odds. <laughs> the mathematical odds. I'm sure with all the ping pong balls, we can figure out the odds. And there's someone much smarter who wants to do it. Adam, this question is for you. Okay. When... This is... Uh, I'm gonna... It's usually not a good sign. This is from Clearly a Bot. Okay. When are we getting an emu war oh! Adam's history corner? Can you, can you do it you today? Do it? No, I can't do it today. I can't oh, okay. do it today. I can't do it today. No, you're right. You deserve that. Okay. The, the, the Discord has been asking about the Emu War. <laughs> That's and your Red Dead Redemption. It is my yeah. Red Dead Redemption, and I need to do that. You're right. <laughs> Friday? I need, I need to Friday. Let's do Friday. Friday's a good, okay. it's a good way to end the week. It'll be fun. We just had so much hockey today. I feel like, you know. We have, it's playoffs. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just hockey all the time. It's a lot of hockey. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it is. Love it. All right. So Friday for Friday. Discord. Emu War. There you go. Hey. It's going to be a fun story. Uh, last thing. Leafs 0-8 in games that they can win a playoff. Flash qualifier series. Not this true. From, They're one and eight. Well, fucking duh. Obviously. Oh, win? Yeah. Yeah, no, win. Uh, duh. Uh, from Phil Becks since 2004. They're 0 and 8. Yeah, because they haven't won a playoff series. Yep. yep. Is okay. Thursday the day? It's hard to bet against Tampa at home. I'm not betting against the Leafs in the series. My prediction from the beginning of the series was Leafs in seven. I. You're on pace. <laughs> I hope... The Leafs are ahead of schedule. I think I think it, it, it ends in Tampa. Wow. Eliminating Tampa, Tampa in any way, shape, or form sends a message. Doing it in Tampa, meaning the Leafs win the majority of games in Tampa over the course of the series. Yeah. That'll get everyone's attention. Freege said that whatever the, it is the Leafs do before the game, like before the first period of the game to warm up, they should stop and do whatever it is they do before the second period of the game. And he's right. Yo. If they start, like if you don't tip, if you don't, if you don't just give up two goals for no reason, like the Leafs did last night, like 
I, 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 Jason Spencer the, should announce the opening lineup. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and honestly, like, I, I think that they can, and I think that they will. I think that they're going to do it in Tampa, and I think it's going to be, uh, I really, I, I believe in the poise of this team. I believe they've got, they've got guts. We've been asking for guts for years. That's a team with guts. Yeah. They're men. They're made of flesh and bone. They're, they're, they're not faultless, but they have fewer faults than in years past. Let's go, go, boys. If Tampa lose, no, if Tampa wins versus the Leafs in Tampa, and then they lose to Toronto in Toronto in Game Seven, does that mean their streak of not losing back to back games in the playoffs is still alive? Uh, yeah. And they can still defend that streak. Yeah, coming next year. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a fun way to get eliminated. I guess <laughs> well, it, it'll be you know what? it'll be better when the Leafs break that streak and end it on Thursday. There you go. Oh. Come on, Leafs, end it on Thursday. <laughs> I like that. You, you know what? Break a few streaks. Vasilevsky, because he's gonna oh. lose. Oh. You heard me? Oh no! Ah. Dangerous. Three goal third period. We need to ask: Is he good? <laughs> well, Toronto. If uh, yeah, we would be like, oh, do we even resign this guy? Uh, evidence <laughs> Probably suggests, need to fire him into the sun. Before just bad. Before we go, Adam, there was a special episode of Agent Provocateur that dropped yesterday. Yes, Scott Morrison joined us, um, and Scott Morrison is, just wrote a book on the 1972 series, and it's actually great because this year uh, is the 50th anniversary of the 72 Summit Series between Canada and Russia. So not only do we get a Scott Morrison retrospective. I believe there is a Ken Dryden book on his experiences in that series coming out in August. So hopefully he'll rejoin us on AP for that. But Scott's interesting because he's a, he's an NHL historian, right? And as a history geek, I'm like, oh, all the way in for this. No, uh, I don't like that noise you uh, just made. You want to hear the ugliest noise ever? Do you want to hear the scariest noise? No. No, no, look at your camera. Ready? Ready? You want to hear the ugliest noise? No, stop that. Isn't that uncomfortable? Somebody said that to me. My, my roommate, Marty, once said that to me and he was like, do you want to hear the grossest noise? And then he went right up to my ear and he was like, eh. I was like, that is disgusting. I never forgot it. Anyway, Scott Morrison uh, I want to go home. is decidedly one of the best historians in hockey. And I think what's so great about this is he talks about everything from like why the Summit Series actually happened, which a lot of people just don't know. And it was all politically motivated on both sides. Think about the logistical nightmare of corralling a bunch of NHL players after the playoffs are over. Mm-hmm. not paying them and saying, hey, you're going to play four games in Canada across the country. You're going to fly after every game. And then you're going to spend two weeks in Sweden playing just fun teams there. Yep. And then you're going to go to the Soviet Union, a place you've never mm-hmm. seen or heard or whatever. And you're going to go play uh, four games there. Yeah. What do you mean we're going to play a seven game series against the Russians? Oh, no, no, no. It's an eight game series. Even amount of games because fuck you. That's right. And <laughs> like what, what? I mean, everything from, you know, NHLPA head Alan Eagleson almost getting arrested and taken to Soviet jail to um, the infamous kick to uh, Bobby Clark, like ending Harlamov's uh, uh, series. And he was an outstanding player. Paul Henderson screaming at, at his teammates to let him on the ice before the, the game winning goal. All of that sort of covered in the in the podcast, and of course the book's amazing too. So, Phil Esposito um, destroying a chandelier. Yes. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. But this is what was it? we didn't we didn't cover that part in the podcast. <laughs> He's talking about so, the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Some really great stories in there, and Time. and for I know for Alan, <laughs> Alan was at Game One in Montreal, and the yeah. le- and, and the and yeah. Canadian the Canadian team went up like two nothing, and they lost seven to three. Oof. And he remembers that game, and Ken Dryden, his hero, was in net. So it's kind of cool to get the perspective of the guy who was there when it right. started. Right. Very, very cool. And uh, I think you'll love the show. He was a little kid, by the way. Just so <laughs> he wasn't. He like was repping guy. half the team at that point. <laughs> he was like seven. All of them were noted Alan Walsh clients. <laughs> I've Mostly been the, the Russian age <laughs> this whole time. <laughs> so you're aware. See, now that I've lost my voice, do I do a better Alan I think Walsh? it's more raspy. Yeah, yeah, do it. Welcome to another episode it's- of. Agent it's still too high. You got to get the mean? octaves lower. Yeah, okay, I got it. Bring it down. Welcome yeah. to another episode of no, no, I think he's hired. no. He doesn't. No, we're work. Work on it. Workshop. The- Sean Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> what about Martin Furk? <laughs> oh, Furk bomb. Furk bomb. <laughs> Best player, Adam, in the league. There it is. <laughs> Only behind Jonathan Huberto. Who should be nominated for the Hart Trophy and win. (laughs) There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Dangle as Alan Walsh. Check out the episodes, all of them, and a brand new CJ show tomorrow. The Steve Dangle Podcast.
powered by Sports Interaction. Canada Sportsbook. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W Y L D E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.